Praise the Lord, everybody. Dominique Baptiste here. Welcome tonight to tonight's Bible study. I want to say hello to um, special friends and family. Amen. Good evening. Good morning. Um, also, thank each and every one of you for joining. While we're waiting on a few people to join us, praise God, let a little couple of minutes pass. You know how that goes. We want to um, remind everyone to like, follow, share, retweet, and subscribe. So no matter what platform you're on, there is a way to share. You can like, follow, share, and then retweet and subscribe. And if you are particularly blessed by this message, I ask that you message inbox it to somebody. <laughs> See, there are always new ways to share the Word of God. When we think about when the Lord said, go spread the gospel, go spread the good news. Wow, the number of ways, we had no concept when he said that. You know, when he said that to the, you know, when he said that in the writing of the word, you know, go ye therefore and teach all nations, you know, who, I know everyone thought at the time we'll be doing a lot of traveling, but the reality is this, while I'm sitting here speaking right now, there are people around the world who can hear and who can connect to this message. And if they can connect live or they can hear this message Days, months, weeks, years later, praise God, as long as it stays up, right? And still be blessed by it. Or if someone private inboxes it to you and you download it, it's yours as long as the tech lasts, right? So God is so amazing. He sees beyond anything that we could ever ask or think. He sees beyond our imagination, our thoughts, our deepest imagination and our deepest thoughts. <laughs> Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Um, mm, let's get into Exodus. You know, we have the audacity to talk about going through the Word of God all year long. And we're going to do it. Are you going to do it with me? Praise God, let's do it. We're in the book of Exodus. This is the book that starts right after the book of Genesis. We're going to cover um, chapters 1 through 4 tonight. Amen. No pressure if you get an opportunity to read it. I do encourage you to read Praise God, um, chapters one through four. But if you don't get a chance to read the entire thing, that's all right. You know why? Because you can always, you can always um, choose some of our highlight scriptures. And one of our highlight scriptures tonight is um, chapter three and verse 14. And it says this, and I want you to write this down. Exodus chapter three and 14. It says, God said unto Moses, I am who I am. And this is what you are to say unto the Israelites. I am has sent me unto you. Amen. He is our ever present. Amen. Ever present help in the time of trouble. He is our I am God. Our, it's uh, when you when you say I am from the Hebrew, the connects the co correct pronunciation is Haya. Welcome my sister. Good to see you tonight. Many blessings to you. Amen. And, and, it, and it's an active word, and it actually means, he says, to be or to come to pass. Um, some have interpreted as, you know, I am the start and the finish. I am the, um, the ani and the anoki, the cause and the effect. He says, I am who I am. Amen. So when they, when they ask, when he asks, he says, who shall I say sent me? Then who else was there to send them? Send them other than the ever-present help of God in the time of trouble. He said to them, he said, tell them, I am the God of the moment, the God in the right now. <laughs> Praise God. He sent them. Praise God. Amen. So let's look at, um, we're, gonna, we're looking at Exodus. We're going through the Bible in 2020. Yes. Praise God. And we're ushering in this decade with a journey through the word of God. Let God speak to us and enlighten us all the more. Amen. Um, some will study for the first time. Some will in this foundation, the foundation will be laid for the first time. Some of you, your foundation will be repaired where there's like some, some places that are, um, that have cracked or that were not solid settled in the first place. And for others of you, it will re you know, there, there's somewhere it may have been mixed with something other than word, right? So a little history, praise God. So we're going in there and breaking that up pulling it out, and putting in some fresh foundation directly from the Word. Amen? Amen. So Exodus chapter 
um, one through four tonight. That's your reading assignment. Our, our you know, between now and tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God. Our keynote scripture is Exodus chapter three and verse fourteen. Now, there's about we we, we finished our introduction to um, Exodus last night, and there is probably since the end of Genesis until the beginning of Exodus as we know it, approximately theologians say 350 years have passed by since the closing in Genesis. That means that 350 years since Abram um, left, since Abram and his brother and, and Joseph and his brothers were all reconnected, another 300 and well, not Abram, but. Um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob and his sons. Amen. Because I was like, that's a long time. Um, Jacob and his sons were reconnected. Amen. With his brother Joseph. And they were all moved into Egypt. You know. So that is, that's an incredible journey. It's an incredible time to see the, the motivation of the people of, of Egypt still, um, the children of, of Israel in Egypt. Right? Finding family and finding community. And here, here's what I'm saying to you. It's like, if you think about it, Genesis is about, is about the beginning of a family. It's about the beginning of mankind. It is about the beginning of the family of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then the subsequent tribes. But just as we began to meet the tribes, just as they began to become a family, um, what we find is that we come into the book of Exodus. Because Exodus isn't about as much building um, the history of the family, it is, though, the history of the nation. That we come to know the children of Israel in the book of Exodus. We get to know Adam, we get to know Noah, we get to know, you know, Abraham and everything, Abraham and Sarah, you know, Isaac and, and Rebecca and, um, and, his, and his wife Leah, Leah first and then Rebecca, right? And then we get to know Jacob. Um, and Esau, and then Jacob and, and his children, and you know all of his children, praise God, and his son Joseph, um, and then his children. But now we are coming to meet for the very first time the descendants 350 years in. When the children of Israel first came into Egypt, there were only about 70 of them. Historically speaking, there were only about 70, but in 350 years of, of life, you know, marrying and, and, and marrying and, and taking wives and having children. We see now that by the time they actually leave Egypt, they're about three million strong. Amen. Talking about the resilience of the people. You know, God and his awesomeness had blessed them. They multiplied both financially. They multiplied um, exponentially as people. You know, 300, 3 million people from just 70. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> and then they took, they, they took the earth's commission seriously. <laughs> when the Lord said, be fruitful and multiply, they came and, and, you know, they were fruitful in the land of Goshen. And they did exactly that. They multiplied. So much so, so much so that after Joseph passed, after Joseph had passed, there came a dynasty into the, um, into Egypt. And that, that dynasty, they were known as the Pharaohs. Now, praise God, they were known as the pharaohs. So the pharaohs, you know, being the, I guess, the, the family or the organization, and more, more so than anything, that they were, um, the group, the believers. Um, being a pharaoh included your bloodline. Being a pharaoh included your religion. It, it had a lot to do with who they worshipped. Um, being a pharaoh had to do with the power that you exert, that they exerted in the land at the time. It was like, this is the power of our God um, in the kingdom. That's why everybody that was after them was named Pharaoh. <laughs> Amen. And they, and they bore the other names of other gods, quote unquote, gods, small g, at the time. <laughs> Praise God. So when Joseph, you know, Joseph passed, he did tell them, he said, listen, guys, don't leave my body here. When you leave, take me with you. Because I believe that God is going to take you back to the land of promise. Now, when we talk about this place of promise, this land of promise, we're talking about Canaan. Canaan is what God promised to Abram. And then he brought him to Canaan. Promise fulfilled, right? But then what else did he tell them? He said that I will make your children 
as the stars of the sky. For Abram, that was uh, that was just impossible to number those. You know, it was impossible to number them. And I thank God for that because that would have put a limit on God. But what it did was it opened up his heart and the faith of Abram to say, God, you do it, right? And the power of his family and the culture at the time was that they would share family history person to person, heart to heart, family to family. So the fact that after 350 years, the message is still being passed down. The Lord promised our father, our father, our grandfather, or our great grandfather. At this point, you stop counting. It's like our father. I mean, the patriarch of our family. God promised him the land of Canaan. We came into Goshen to survive when we had favor. But now God is going to deliver us back into Canaan because this is what he promised us. He promised it to the father to our you know to the to the patriarch in our family and in making that promise to the patriarch that also meant to each one of us because the thing about it when God made that promise to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 he also made promises pertaining to his children his children's children's children and their entire lineage see I love the Lord <laughs> amen God was leaving anybody out he said, I want this message to go forward. So as they went from generation to generation, they continued to pass on the message that we are God. God loves us. God loves us as a people. He has chosen us. Amen. His hand was on our, you know, our father in faith, so to speak. Um, children, his hand was upon us. And so because it was upon us, we know and we will receive the blessing of the Lord. Now, some of them heard it. You know, it's amazing, isn't it, when the Lord speaks to you or he speaks to someone before you and he makes you a promise of blessing. And in that promise of blessing, when it finally arrives, it may have taken so long to get here, you know, just so, so long to get here. Then by the time it finally arrives, you kind of like, all right, <laughs> right, exactly. You know, it's like, okay, God. All right, I was looking for that in my 20s. I'm in my 40s now. <laughs> you know, and the Lord goes, all right, it's time to move on. You know, in this case, you know, Moses, you know, he's got 20, 40, 60. You know, he's, he's in his 60s now, you know, and, he, and here comes the Lord. <laughs> it's like, okay, now. And so this is kind of where we are, and this is where we pick up. We kind of pick up here. You know, Joseph died, and things just went crazy. Things went absolutely crazy. They... Um, the descendants, like the pharaohs, like I said, you know, you can always tell when someone serves a God other than the true and living. Now, people can say what they want to say. I'll tell you now, you can always tell because the first thing that people that do not serve the true and living God do is attack the people that do. They attack the people that do. They accuse um, them of being, you know, a nemesis, somebody who is out to get them, somebody who is out to... Um, you know, overthrow the government, you know, they must be making plans while they meet and that kind of thing. You can always tell when someone arrives, they begin, that's not in God's, that's not a part of God's plan. They start speaking against those that have already shown themselves to be a part of God's plan. So now they're on the scene and they've turned around and they decide we're going to have to enslave them. They're a little too powerful. They have too much money. They're going to outnumber us after, all, after a while when them kids grow up. You know, when those kids grow up, you know, we don't know what what they what they're teaching them over over in those classes over on the weekends, on Friday nights. We don't know what they're teaching them. So, we're going to have to kind of reset reset their freedoms, reset their lifestyle. They have worked here for us and done well. So we're going to reset their lifestyle. And when they decide to reset them, they set them to a position of servitude and not a position of equality. When Joseph was there, they were considered equals. You know, you can have a job, I can have a job. You can own a store, I can own a store. Now Joseph, now, you know, the pharaohs have arrived. Them and their idol God have taken over. And the children of Israel are now forced to pray to God in Goshen. They're forced to reside in a place um, where only they, you know, where only they got, God knew and they knew that they were praying there. They were forced to rehearse the history of their father um, and their, the father of their family, the patriarch 
of their family, Abraham, the blessing that God had promised him, you know, they were forced to rehearse that um, privately. You know, they were told stories about how wealthy they were at one time. Because, see, now it's 350 years later. And who knows? God spoke to him hundreds of years ago. So now everything that the children of Israel are living on is faith. Some would say it's a hope and a prayer, but a hope and a prayer, last time I checked, is faith in action. <laughs> Amen. You know, it says, it says this, hope, what is it? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So if we continue, if they continue to pray and to hope, Amen. And to pray and to hope and to believe God and to hope they would ultimately see the work of God manifest. But generation after generation had passed. Generation after generation had passed and no one was seeing it. But what we could count on was we knew, they knew, and you know, I think it's great that we can see kind of kind of all know, kind of a little knowing anyway. I won't say all knowing. Um, but we can see a little after the fact kind of what what, what really happened. Right? What was going on with God? The revelation with God and his people. One of the revelations we saw from last evening was that the very thing that the brothers had purposed for Joseph was lived out on their children, their descendants, as well as Joseph's descendants. They purposed for him to be a slave and enslaved for their lives. And their you know, and that's why they sold him into slavery. But now we see that it happened not only to Joseph's children. You know, Joseph lived and reigned. Um, he lived a, the end of his life as a ruler. He lived the end of his life in wealth. But their, many of their children did not. And this was also a portion, a portion because of the intent of the heart of the father towards the chosen one of God. See, you know when it says the sins of the sons shall the, the sins of the fathers shall fall on the sons. We see this principle come into play right here, and it comes in for that generation, the next generation, the one after, and still another generation. We have to be so careful what we wish, what we say, what we speak, what we pray over the lives of other people, simply because the very thing that we sow will be the very thing that not sometimes not even we reap, but it could fall upon our children if we don't repent, if we don't have a change of heart. Amen. If we don't listen and listen for the voice of God to, to be transformative in our language, in what we put out in the atmosphere. God tells us to love our neighbors, we love ourselves, to bless our enemies, then that's what we should do. Amen. Whether we like them, whether we know them, whether we understand anything. Jesus said, what What was his last words in the app? Well, he said, it's finished. That was the end. But what was the other thing he said? He said, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. He said, forgive them. Amen. We have to pray. Amen. For, praise God. Amen. Thank you. Uh, for four generations. But we have to pray for the lives of others. Amen. And we have to forgive. We can't hold things against individuals because what we do, it will land where? On our children, our children's children, and children's children, and children's children. No. <laughs> Amen. No and no and no again. We don't want that. Amen. We want the blessing of the Lord to overtake all of our children and up to four generations and so forth. So let's speak the blessings of the Lord, even on those who speak evil against us, as the word of God says, even on those who despitefully use us, as the word of God says, even of those of us who have been, you know, lied to, lied, cheated, talked about, mistreated, buked, scorned, you know, whatever it is. Amen. We must trust God, amen, to watch over and bless, amen, us and those who oppose us. Praise God and oppose the God in us. Most of the time, it's not even about us. It's about the God in us. You know, the family records of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, are no doubt they were carried to Egypt. Praise the Lord. Amen. By, um, they were carried into Egypt by their children. And what we see is a, as you know how when times get rough, what do we do? When we are a family, we 
pulling in closer together. And that's what we saw the children of Israel doing. They pulled in closer together. You know, we see God coming down to deliver the people in chapter 3, verses 7 through 8. And we'll take a look at that. Um, it says, and now the individuals and families that had helped to organize. Amen. That's right. The blessings of God do make us rich and add no sorrow. Amen. It says, so we see the family, we see this family coming together and God organizing them, not only just as a family, but as a nation. Their numbers now are so significant. Um, you know, three million people. That's a major city. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a major, that's a few cities in some states. You know, some states only have about that, you know, maybe some countries, especially in the eastern parameters, only have about that many people in the whole country, if that many in some countries. You know, so we have to um, know that when the Lord was coming for them, he was coming for a significant number of people. He was coming for people that had grown too big to know their neighbor. They were now considered a nation. You know, so we think now we see that, you know, they, they've become a fan, they become this huge community. They become neighbors and cousins, but no longer cousins and cousins because there's so many layers of marriage in between them and children in between them that they are so disconnected from each other that their, their gene pool may not even match anymore. You know, um, may not match closely anymore, I would say. Anyway, um, Ancestry.com couldn't connect them as relatives unless we told them their names. You know how that goes. So, um, Exodus chapter 3 and verse 4, what we find in Exodus 3 and verse 4 is this, um, is the preparation, you know, that they had been made, that they had been making for 600,000 men on foot. You know, they were making preparation to, to leave Egypt. You know, in, let me just go back to kind of chapters 1 and 2. I don't want to pass over anything. We know that in one, um, Moses is born. Um, he then he grows up in in, in the in the I want to say in the castle, but he grows up in the I would say the castle, but um, where he where where the where the pharaohs lived. He's raised by the daughter of uh, one of the pharaohs, and then but he's always an outsider. They all know he's not an Egyptian. <laughs> he looks Jewish to me. <laughs> You know, um, so then as he grows up, he grows up and he is kind of right alongside one of the sons in regard to his age. So the next thing that we know is that um, he grows up and he slays an Egyptian. He's met by his mother. He's introduced to his brothers and they tell him, God saved your life and he saved you to save us. You know, so they tell him the history of his family. They tell him the history of, of the, um, the children of Israel. They tell him kind of what they have experienced so far. And they tell him the promises of the Lord that were coming. You know, that God was going to raise up one. Amen, the palace. Thank you so much. Um, the God was going to raise up one who would be their deliverer. So this is a part of their historical teaching at the time. And they were coming. And so he was like, he says, oh, that, that must be me. So he believes that he is it. He is he. That God is raising up to bring deliverance to his people. Now, mind you, he's grown up in the palace, and he is <clears throat> he's Egyptian trained, so he thinks that he's a little bit he's a little better a little better than everybody else, not on purpose, but excuse me, that's just a part of um what he's been taught, how he's been trained. he's smart, right he's well educated, he's educated both in um, the, the teaching of the pharaohs as well as the teaching of the Jews because of his mother, amen, and his, and, his, and his siblings. And now everyone that's watching is watching him. And Moses grows up, but he knows that God has a special thing for him, and that's to deliver the, Jew, to, to deliver the children of Israel. Now, the powerful thing is this. He embraces the calling. He just does not, I'll say, he tries to embrace it within himself. Because he takes the smallest way out. He tries to take out one person. This one person. I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this one person. But he's gonna, he's, he has to del get deliverance. Lawful deliverance for the children of Israel. So after this, he's now wanted fugitive. Had he been an Egyptian? After he'd been, I mean, totally out of God's timing. So had he been an Egyptian? 
They might not have chased him down. They might not have said, let's kill him. But he killed an Egyptian. And that's when he was reminded, you're a Jew. <laughs> we, My sister found you on the ocean, on the on the river. So, you know, um, we're going to have to get, get Moses and kill him to just prove to them that, you know, you're a Jew, you're a Jew, you're a Jew, right? Or you're an Israelite, you're an Israelite, you're an Israelite. But you are not an Egyptian. Praise be the name of the Lord for Moses being resilient and deciding to run. I said, you know, he just is like, look, I'm not, I'm, nope, I am leaving. <laughs> I am leaving, I am leaving. Now, in verse 23 of chapter 2, amen, I love this. The children of Israel, it says, God hears the complaints of the Israelites. So in verse number 23, it says, it came to pass that in the process of time that the king, that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel signed, uh, sighed by reason of the bondage and they cried and they cried and and they cried and their cry came up to the Lord God by reason of bondage and God heard their groanings and remembered his covenant with Abraham Isaac and with Jacob it says and God took looked upon the children of Israel and he had respect unto them his heart turns toward them um this word here in re, speaking of in regard to respect unto them. He says, he remembered them. He knew them. He understood them. He, he realized, I know these guys. Greetings. Bless the Lord. Welcome, my sister. Praise God. Amen. He's, he's like, I know them. I recognize them. I hear their cry. See, this because of the promise that God had already given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? <laughs> Amen. And subsequently on to them, these promises pertain to them. They were um, in their heart. They knew. We, God said this to our father. Lord, you, you told Abraham, you told Isaac, you told Jacob that you were going to bring us deliverance. You told them that we wouldn't always be in bondage, that you were going to take us back to Canaan. Do we have to die to go to Canaan? You know? And so because they perceived, it says when the king died, they cried out to God all the more, the king of Egypt. So apparently they perceived him to be the good king and that trouble with Ramses was on its way. That, you know, maybe they didn't want to run a chance with this next king. So they cried out to God and God heard them. He heard them. And when he heard them, he put, amen, an answer in action. Amen. That, that one that he had kind of in, in his hip pocket. God had, remember Moses? You know, he's been gone. Now Moses was raised 20 years in the palace. And now here's another 20 years. He's been gone. He's been gone, uh, totally out of sight, not, you know, not available to them for 20 years. He's now away, you know, 20 years in, in as a young man, present, amen, now 20 years gone. And God is hearing the cry of the children of Israel. And the next thing that we know, the Lord hears him so clearly and so well that he decides the next thing is, he's, it's time to go get Moses. It's time to release Moses. It's time for the release. How old is Moses at this time? He was 20 years when he left. He was gone 20 years. That's 40. And then he was approximately 60 years old when he came back. Now, for those who think that, oh, Lord, <laughs> praise the Lord, bless you tonight. Amen. For those of you who think, oh, Lord, I'm 55, I'm 56, I'm 59, I'm 60. Moses was 60. Amen. He was there just in time. Praise God for the work of the Lord. His work, his ministry began at 60. I'm going to throw up some hearts for all my 60 year olds. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Don't, let's not feel that, oh, I'm getting tired. No, let's not get tired. Let's remember that the call of gifts and causes of God are without repentance. He doesn't take them back. So if he called you at 20, and told you he had a great work for you to do, and you know, 30 came, 40 came, 50 came, and now you're about to turn 60. Guess what? Activation time. And it may be it may even be 80. Eight, most, um, Abraham gave birth to Isaac, or Sarah gave birth to Isaac anyway, um, at 80. Activation time. It's all about God's timing and his purpose. We see these principles planted in our history. The history of believers, the histories of those who are followers of God. 
Amen. So since this is our history, amen, we have to trust God to know. He says, I'm planning this here because some of you are going to get to be 60 and think I forgot about you and I didn't. Some of you are living in hard situations and you're thinking that God doesn't hear me. He said, but like the children of Israel cry out to me. He tells us to bring him to bring him to remembrance of his promises. Not like he forgot, but it's for a rehearsing of our faith. He didn't forget the children of Israel. What he did, though, was he waited until they called on him wholeheartedly. As a nation, they were praying to the Lord. They had come together and they cried out to him together for change. And because they cried out together as a nation, they came in as a family. They're leaving as a nation. And they, they're getting ready to leave anyway, Egypt, at this point, as a, as a nation of believers in God. God said, now I can deliver not just the family, but I can deliver the nation. They're ready to go out because they've held to the faith. So they're ready now to go out. And let me establish the faith that I have built inside of them up until now. Up until now, like I said, Moses, he's now ready to release the Moses on them. He's ready to reach out to Moses for his calling um, verses ch in chapter 3 verses, I'll say 1 through, really, all the way to the end. Um, the entire chapter of chapter 3 is about Moses' calling to serve, to come, and to now actually go into action and to serve God. It's about knowing that Moses actually knowing that this is God that called me, that it's not just something that someone told me, that he has now empowered me. Because what does God do? He shows Moses his power. He not only gives him words, but he shows him power. And he shows him the power of God. He shows them the power of a God of God, not the power of a man that can go and wrestle down and maybe kill another man. That's one man. God shows him his power as God. He shows him turn a rod in, in, you know, what happens with his rod. He shows him a withered hand and then a hand renewed. He shows him a bush burning, but it's not being consumed. Why is this bush burning? It's okay to burn. It's the desert, you know, but now it's not consumed. God is showing him that I am the preserver of all life. It's in my hands. Right? So he sees the power and the presence of God in his life. Who fights God? <laughs> you know, this is a case, this is a case of, you know, God against um the Pharaoh God against the Pharaohs that they just can't win. That their God just can't win. That their magicians just can't win. See, witchcraft, magic, none of that just can't win. <laughs> right? This is a case in which God Almighty is going to show himself as God to the children of Israel. One last thing I want to add in here is this. Is that the children of Israel, this whole dance, so to speak, with um, a, Moses coming to them and now meeting with the Pharaoh... And telling Pharaoh that the Lord has said, you know, let my people go. You know, so that they can come out to me and to worship me in the desert. He tells them, come, that the, I want them to come out and to worship me in the desert. And so when he tells them that, he, he, he realizes that from the time that happens until they actually leave Egypt, based on historical accounts, it's approximately a year. It's a year. It's a year of one visit. Then another visit, then another visit. And about this time, the children of Israel's faith is starting to build. Because if it had happened the first time they were leaving, not many of them, they say, I'd rather deal with the devil I know than the one I don't. They weren't leaving. It's not in human nature. In human nature, even though, like so, like we said earlier, we're believing God, believing God, believing God, and then when it finally happens, it's like, God, is that you? I need to throw out a fleece. <laughs> I need to, can I get, can I get a couple of, um, what are those, a couple of confirmations? You know, is that you? <laughs> so the Lord knew that while Moses is now doing the political work for the deliverance of the children of Israel, God is over here working on the hearts and the faith of the actual children of Israel as they watch every victory 
their faith builds. Every victory, we could really be getting delivered, y'all. Every victory, this is Moses, and they haven't killed him yet. Every victory, every time you hear word back as to what happened, they their faith builds just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. And as their faith builds, now it's time. Their faith is ready. Their faith is ready. You know, the Pharaoh of the time, he, he's pronounced judgment. And then he says, what? God said, I got this. <laughs> and then God himself starts to war. We see the plagues that come up on, um, is, that come up on um, Egypt, but they don't come up on Goshen. Goshen's right there. It's the suburbs. Come on. How do you get fleas and ticks and flies and all of that? And we don't get any of that. How, do you, how does it rain blood there, but there's the, our water's clear over here? You know, how does that happen? That's a war from God. That's when, you know, I quit. Who? Oh, Lord. Uh -uh. It's time to let God be God. Whatever he wants with these people. See, exactly. Crazy people. Whatever he wants with these people, y'all be encouraged. Y'all roll with that. You know, so that was Pharaoh's time to let go. But because he was obviously possessed by the, that God that drove him, right? We'll talk about that tomorrow. But, but, but before we get to the, de the, the demon possessed, the other God possessed Pharaoh, because the only thing that could make you think that you could win a battle against the true and living God has to be something else that thinks it wants to be God. No, no man's ego can really be that big to think that he would win against a battle against God. You know, here God is, has turned, you know, has turned their water into blood. Come on. But the people next door, they're, they, they, they fine. You know, they're walking through the city. You're walking through the city. You know, gnats and flies are biting you and balls are growing on your skin and they're walking through the city looking good. That's a sign. <laughs> you know, it's like, I need to get, find out who they serving. I need to find out what's going on with them. But instead, he wanted to keep them under oppression. See, God was building the faith. It wasn't just that Pharaoh was wicked. It was that the children of Israel needed the faith in God that God had actually come to rescue them. He had come to, he had come to rescue them. The God whose name is I am that I am, amen, had come to rescue them right then to take them to the promised land, the land that he had promised their eldest father. He had come for their faith. He had come for their prayers. He had come for the heart of the people that were crying out to him saying, we believe in you. And we don't believe that you lied to Abraham. You didn't. You told him this and he told us through our fathers and our fathers and our fathers and our father's fathers to believe and we believe. Now God, deliver us your people. God, save us, you know, and they cried out and God heard them and he remembered them and he remembered his promise to them and he brought them the deliverance that they cried out for. The promise that God made about Moses, God remembered them. It was now time for activation. Amen. We, you know, now I think that they, we probably could have a conference and name it something, you know, if, if, if we heard, amen, the hand of God talking about over an individual or a group of people, you know, some about, you know, moving in this now generation. You know, it's time for activation. You know, it's time for somebody to prophesy over you. But when it was time for Moses to move, God told him. He reached out to him and he said, Moses. <laughs> and he's like, who? And the Lord said, it's me, God. He said, take off your shoes. The ground where you're standing is holy. And he put an example right in front of him of his glory. He's like, I am the all-consuming fire who still preserves life. And in that, preser in that preservation, and that demonstration, it, it, bur it burned an indelible image on the heart of Moses that he would go and do the work of the Lord. And while he's doing the work, the great ambassador, right? While he's doing the work of God, God is over here working on the hearts of the people. And he's using... People like you, like me, amen. He's using other people to, to encourage the hearts of the, you see that, that has to be God. The fleas are on them. They're not on us. They have boils. I don't have any boils. You got boils? No, we don't have boils. God is fighting them. The God of, of Abraham is taking out the Egyptians. Yes. You know? And then you just go and take them little sandwiches. You need a burger. 
<laughs> you would, would you like, ma'am? No problem. We're going to go ahead and mop that floor. No problem. My God is getting y'all. <laughs> amen. See, we can rejoice when God, amen, reveals himself as God. But not all of the Egyptians were lost, to be honest. They were not. Many of them, they were um, so grateful to God that they were leaving. They gave them gifts. They said, here, take this with you. <laughs> you know, we took this from your mom. We took this from the generations before you. So I'm going to go ahead and give you your gold stuff back. I'm going to go ahead and give you your silver back. I'm going to go ahead and give you a little extra money. You need some clothes. Here's some beautiful clothes. We took those from y'all too. So, you know, my family is a little responsible. So I'm going to go ahead and give this to you. Be encouraged. Don't come back. <laughs> they did that. And they did that because they believed also. And they did that because many of their hearts were repentant. See, we have to understand human nature. We have to understand, amen, <laughs> yes, he do it, Lord, right? We have to understand what God is doing when he is doing something amazing. That He's not just working in, in the White House. He's not just working in government, amen. He's working in government, and then he's also working in the hearts of people. So while he's working on the government, while he's doing what he's doing, we're going to be down here believing him. Amen. And committing to walking through. Finally here, when the children of Israel were ready to believe God, their faith was at the level where God could say, now I can move. Amen. Moses' faith was now at the level was like, get ready. That's when God was ready to talk to them about Passover. We'll start there tomorrow night. Many blessings to each and every one of you. Remember, it's we're in chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Tonight, um, we're going to pick up tomorrow. And we're talking... Um, beginning tomorrow evening about the pathway to Exodus, Exodus and the um, Exodus and Passover. So them actually leaving, but prior to them leaving, there was the Passover meal, and that was so beautiful and so significant to us as Christians. Praise God! So let's get ready to understand Passover and then begin to, to walk it out. <laughs> Amen. Many blessings to each and every one of you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your kindness, and your love. We thank you, God, for your, your giving us this word, passing this word on to us so that we could see you and we could know you and we could see and know you um, as you reveal yourself to us as how you have dealt with others in the past, those who came before us, those who believed before us. Praise God that as we come along to believe, Dear Father God, and as our faith is built and our belief is strengthened, dear Lord God, may we be in the image of your resurrected Son, Christ. Amen. Our Lord, our Savior, our King. Amen. All the more. All the more. May our faith grow stronger as we see the power of you, Lord God, living in the living history of this body of believers. And we just say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. See you tomorrow. Many blessings. Oh, remember to like, follow, share, retweet, inbox, and now one more, um, subscribe. Many blessings. Bye-bye.